I'm Dave Rubin and we've got another Friday roundtable extravaganza for you. Today, I'm joined by the host of the Jesse Kelly Show. Jesse Kelly, how do you figure that out? And hosts of the brand new Blaze TV show, You Are Here, Elijah Schaefer and Sydney Watson. Welcome to the Rubin Report, guys. Thanks for having us. No, it's an honor for you to have me. (laughs) Indeed it is. I am glad to have you guys. I have to say, right up top, I was gonna start by talking a little bit about internet censorship, and then I don't know what the hell happened, but we normally live stream this thing and uh, we are having problems. So this is this is taped. So I guess my first question to all of you is, do the internet lords have it out for us? Jesse? Well, they definitely have it out for us, but uh, the truth is that our, our sheer magnetism is way more powerful than any internet streaming service out there could ever be. So at some point in time, everyone on this video is going to be banned completely from the internet, but we'll just come up with something else to do. <laughs> That's the plan. I just found out that you're six foot eight. So you could have a NBA career in front of you. Uh, yeah, I could if I could jump over a piece of paper or run very fast at all. So I think I'll just kind of stand on the sidelines and wave a towel. Look, you still make millions doing that. I'm fine with it. Yeah, pretty good. Sydney, uh, you and Elijah have this new show. You guys have already, just in a couple of weeks, you got like a couple strikes from YouTube or you were taken down from YouTube, then you were back on YouTube. What do you make of this whole thing? Yeah, so our lovely Elijah loves to say very true but uh, inflammatory things that definitely piss off YouTube. So we definitely ended up with two strikes, but then they were subsequently removed. Elijah can totally fill you in on what actually happened because he knows this a little bit better than I do. Um, Honestly, I think we're at a point where the censorship is just getting to a an extreme level. I think that, you know, similar to what Jesse has to say about this, they just want us gone. I mean, if, if you're counter narrative, if you're counter to what they want you to think, you're there, you're not someone that they want around. So I, I don't know, Elijah, how long do you think our show is going to last on a serious note? I don't know. I know that they've, they've gotten down to telling me that I'm not even allowed to call horse to worm or anything else, but the I word, which I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. I feel like a four year old. It's like, we don't say the C word, baby. And and I think the ridiculousness of all of this is is it's like the point of what we're all trying to say is not getting lost. In fact, the censorship is making the point of what we're intending mm-hmm. actually uh, more solidified because the more that we say this stuff is important and the more that we're told we're not allowed to say it, the more important people realize it is. And I think it's kind of funny because when you use euphemisms to skirt around censors and use – Newspeak to get around, you know, this communist Chinese firewall, this digital Berlin barrier. It, you know, people go, wait, what? The, what the hell is the I word? And mm-hmm. then it makes them question, and then it brings them deeper down the rabbit hole. And I am all for it. Yeah, as you guys know, uh, at the end of July, I was banned from Twitter for saying that vaccine mandates are coming. I'm pretty sure. Really? I got that one right. Elijah, what what actually were the two things that you said? Let's go ahead and say them. What are they going to do? Come on. I read the box of uh, of paper masks and also stated the letter from Health and Human Services, which says that there are no uh, true blind studies that show the effectiveness of masks to large scale mitigate COVID-19 um, in many ways. There's no large scale double blinds. And also that these normal surgical masks that people are wearing have warnings on the box that are saying that, you know, basically they're not going to be effective in mass use through the use of kids using them um, in order to stop the spread of any serious viral load. And, and the reality is I'm just reading letters from the government agencies, from the boxes, and I'm just reading that. Now, YouTube says that's not true. That's not medical advice. But I always say, I mean, I'm probably more likely to trust the health and human services, which is saying something, even that, and probably the manufacturers who can get sued of a mask rather than some tech nerd who went to Stanford that lives in uh, Palo Alto. I mean, that's just me. I, for one, only trust Sanjay Gupta because that guy knows what he's doing. Uh, all right, let's 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 start with some video here. Uh, we've got this elderly man who's pretending to be president of the United States, Joe Biden. Listen to this. Let's be clear. Vaccination requirements should not be another issue that divides us. That's why we continue to battle the misinformation that's out there. And companies and communities are setting up their, uh, stepping up as well to combat these, the, the misinformation. Southwest Airlines, at the head of the pilot, the head of the pilot's union and its CEO, dismissed critics who claim vaccination mandates contributed to flight disruptions. 
School board members, religious leaders, and doctors across the country are fighting misinformation and educating people about the importance of vaccines. All of these efforts are going to help us continue moving the dial to eliminate this disease. All right, I like to, I like to give credit where credit is due. Uh, he read off the teleprompter pretty well there. Jesse, he doesn't want us to be divided. If we just do what he says, we won't be divided, right? Come on. I, I don't know why you're dividing us, Dave. I, if you would just do what your Lord and master says, we won't be divided. Do, do I have to hit you again? I, look, it's, I don't want to hit you again, but I'll <laughs> hit you again if you don't do what I say. Why are you- For my own good. What, this, is, this is beyond the creepiness of the fact we have a half functional president. I realize we all make fun of that now, but have you actually thought about that? That's the commander in chief, the leader of the free world, he is not a fully functional adult, and now it's happened so long, which just kind of baked in the cake. It's like, oh, that's old Joe. That's the president. That's the president of the United States of America. That's one, two. Isn't this whole thing beyond creepy how you're not allowed to discuss anything except the vaccine? No natural immunity. Remember when they, they started banning hydroxychloroquine? You're not allowed to talk about ivermectin. You're not allowed to talk about sunshine. You're not allowed to talk about not being fat anymore. You're not allowed to talk about anything, only the vaccine. Anything else is shouted down. It doesn't take a right winger to think that's really, really creepy and something's off. How about herd immunity? Remember that phrase? We don't talk about herd immunity anymore. Now, they just update all the uh, definitions of things to fit the current climate so that when you talk about herd immunity, now you're an insane person because apparently that's not a thing anymore. But Sydney, but Sydney, he said it right there. I mean, he's basically saying, you know, people like us, we're spreading misinformation. You've got your on-air partner, Elijah, over there reading statements. I mean, misinformation, what are you guys doing? It's, I mean, I think what my frustration is, is that even if you don't have the greatest grasp of biology or how a lot of this stuff works, I freely admit I'm not an expert when it comes to any of this, but I go, it's really strange to me that we can't even have a conversation about it, that we're really at a point where they go, no, 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 no discussion can go down whatsoever, because if you are talking about it and it's contrary again to the narrative, then there's something wrong with that, excuse me, <clears throat> and you must stop. You must stop and it must never happen. Like. What, what really this thing that we've had uh, since the beginning of time in humans, which is natural immunity. Why is that banned on Instagram? Why can't you search that term on Instagram or even just why is it the one Elijah says that there's no efficacy of masks in children? Why is it that that gets wiped off the Internet? This whole thing, especially with Biden. And it's like Jesse says, you know, we laugh about it because it's humiliating. But on a world stage, it's so humiliating that this is the leader of the free world. And you have to say free world, because what does that even mean anymore? It is, and I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just have to point this out too, but just piggybacking off what Sydney just said, the social distancing thing, uh, we, we've moved so <laughs> far past that, we don't even laugh about that anymore or point it out I anymore. Am. Can we just bring up how ridiculous it is that the leader of the free world and the most technological, technologically advanced country in the world and the richest country in the world got a virus and the solution was stand six feet away from each other. <laughs> and not only was that the solution, to this day you see it. I mean, you're still standing in footsteps in grocery stores across the country. That's something a toddler would come up with. Just stand away from him, daddy, then you'll be safe. And yet this is something the, the, the most powerful country in the world did as a matter of policy. It's insane. Right, exactly. You, you go to every... You go to every airport and they're jam packed right now because of flight cancellations. We'll get to that in a second. And yet they've got signs everywhere saying social distancing, which nobody's doing. But Elijah, to that point, he even in that very statement that he read, he shared misinformation when he started talking about Southwest, which canceled thousands of flights this week because we know that they were protesting the vaccine mandates. The, the CEO, he also sort of lied about what the CEO said, because the CEO kind of said that's what happened. Um, but is it possible that flights can only be affected by weather if they're Southwest flights and not other flights? Because that's basically, that's basically what Joe's saying. Yeah, you know, I, I think what it is, is we've come into a place where truth matters so little that people pretty much say whatever they want. And uh, I've heard it said that the media and the government have sort of become like a father who has been out of a child's life for 10 years and suddenly pops back in and tries to pretend like they know them and we're the child. And mm. it's like, dad, we are so, we're a decade apart. We are way beyond you. We have grown up. We have grown past you. We don't need you. And don't try to come back in my life because you just, quite frankly weren't needed. And I figured out how to, how to go about. And so you're going to complicate things. And when they say, you know, the Southwest airlines were about, uh, you know, I don't know, pilots being upset, upset about what, 
Cause when I see gats and <laughs> flags hanging out of, out of Southwest Plains, I'm like, come tread on me, daddy. You know, I'm going, who's daddy and wh- who's treading? What is this? Is this about a $2, you know, wage, uh, increase? Of course not. We're in the instrumental part of our society where we are segregating people. I mean, we are already seeing the introduction of blood based passports internationally from the World Economic Forum. I mean, they are talking about bringing Gattaca and these movies to life, putting, taking our blood samples, using that as a direct input to give us clarity to travel and to buy things around the world. And it's not just a future idea. I mean, the largest banks in, in Australia, even the, the grocery stores, um, like Woolworths and Coles, not to be confused with American Coles with a K, this is with a C, are, are you know gonna be linking you know the same QR code system for payment that they are for the Vax passport, but yet are saying they won't be linked together in whatever way that that means. I mean, we are headed towards an absolute tyrannical communist regime and people, at least before they're going to get violent, which they will, are at least protesting the only way they know how. And then they're being uh, dismissed by a half present president. I could say this will spell nothing but disaster. And it's also humiliating. Like Jesse says, it's humiliating that we've come to accept this. I haven't. I'm still laughing at these people. And now I'm getting pissed and I kind of want to see more happen. Yeah. To your point, by the way, you're not making up some Alex Jones crazy conspiracy theory here about World Economic Forum. You just tweeted out the video. So we'll we'll link to it in the description. Jesse, you had a freaking awesome Twitter thread a couple days ago about sort of the split that's happening in the country and, and how we have to realign. And it's it was sort of echoing something I've been saying for a while, which is we've all just got to put our differences aside right now and realize that the communists and the Marxists, they're here, they're pretty much everywhere in the media and big tech and our political establishment, and everyone else has to put aside tax rates and whatever else you're upset about somebody with. It's like fight for America now or never. Can you just kind of elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, I mean, the sappers are digging underneath the walls and they're they're banging down the gates as we speak. And we still have most of the right in wanting to have a meeting about how tall the HOA should allow to ha- the grass to be in the front lawns. I mean, that's really what we're doing. These people are, com- we are completely surrounded. Every single cultural institution from sports to the FBI, to the military, to half the religion in this, every cultural institution is now taken over by Marxists who think you, Dave Rubin, you, Sidney Watson, you, Elijah Schaefer, are not only evil, these people, if they were legally allowed to do so, would throw you in prison right now. Not 10 years from now, right now they would throw you in prison so you can't talk anymore. And that's at a bare minimum. And yet we still have so much of the right haggling over who should be a Trump or nationalists or libertarians or whatnot. It, there is nothing else that matters in this world than stopping communists right now in America. That's why I'm an anti-communist. I'm not a libertarian, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a conservative. I Because stopping these people is all that matters. And if we could stop them tomorrow, I would retire and just walk away and y'all work it out. But instead you get so much of this fighting on the right now. Well, well, actually governors shouldn't ban the mandates because that's not small government. Are you people out of your mind? It's not the year 1900, it's the year 2021. And we currently have the president of the United States pointing to five, 10% of the workforce and saying, you're fired because you won't do something I want to do. That's Mao, I mean, that's Mao stuff. And we're arguing over uh, the governor should or shouldn't. Every politician right now on the right should be joining shields to protect the people because the people are under assault and we we can't even get our own side on board with it. It drives me insane. Yeah, Sydney, I'll I'll give you a last word on that. (laughs) I was just gonna say, I mean, I don't know why you're surprised, Jesse. This has been in uh, action for a really, really, really long time. And you're also, I feel like, and I know that you're completely black-pilled like me on this, but you're expecting governors and you're expecting Republicans to actually do something other than line their own pockets? Come on. No, no, you're you're 100 percent right. It's not that I'm expecting them to. It's I I know they're a bunch. You want them to? Yeah, they are. They're babies. I'm I'm aware that we have a bunch of eunuchs who lead us. I am also aware, though, that these losers can be whipped into doing something decent. I I know we're not going to have all of them, but that they can be whipped into doing something decent if enough of us are screaming. Will you do something, you idiot?
Yeah, I want to just say that real fast that there seems to be a lot of argument online about, um, you know, people are like, this government is going fascist. I want to remind you that most of your history books were written by like some form of communists, at least sympathizers or communists who are trying to get you to think that fascists are in charge. Okay, sure, we all agree, come together, Nazi bad, etc. I mean, even that whole rhetoric to focus on the Nazis all the time is to distract off of the people today that are happening. The fascists fought communists. Communists are trying to confuse people and make you think they're fascists when reality they're communists. They're globalist communists. They are unilateral. They have infiltrated every institution. You need to call them out for what they are. Don't get confused. People go, it's the same side of this, you know, the same coin or whatever. No, it's not. These are communists. There's a way to defeat them. We will destroy them. I'm not saying to become fascist or something like that. But the way that you destroy somebody is to figure out exactly who you're fighting first. And until you realize this is not about, you know, democratic, socialist, et cetera. No, these are totalitarian, democidal, genocidal communists who will murder you. They will kill your family. They will jail you. They will silence you. They will take whatever means necessary. And like Jesse said, the reason why things are, get, are heating up, the reason why things are getting more intense is because their battle and their war is getting intense. And I'm sick of the shit and I'm sick of pretending to be on the defense. It is time that we take the offense. That's where my mind's at. Elijah dropping the black pills right now. We're gonna have to shift you to some clown pills for this one because uh, Terry McAuliffe, who's just like one of the worst sort of Democrat swamp creatures known to man, he is running for governor in Virginia. And we've got a very short clip of him that will perfectly uh, explain the hypocrisy of these ridiculous politicians. Take a look. In addition, it is a Donald Trump, Betsy DeVos plan of moving money from public to private. I will never allow that as governor. That's why parents support me. And when you well, you guys, you're not gonna believe this. He's really for public education, as you can see, and he just will not let those Trump things stand where people have choice. Uh, but from National Review, not only did McAuliffe send at least four of his children to the DC area Potomac School in the 2000s and 2010s, where the annual $30,000 tuition exceeds that of most in-state public universities, but he and his wife invested heavily in shaping their experience there. Jesse, this is shocking. Is it not that these people are beyond hypocrites? I can't believe it. Well, I'm stunned, Dave. I, I, have, I had no <laughs> idea because, I mean, Mao was definitely starving when he was starving 70 million of his own countrymen, right? I mean, Stalin, when he was practically starving to death when he co co completely wiped out Ukraine. This is communism. I mean, we keep bringing up the word, but that's what it is. People act like, well, it's not communism because the, there's a bunch of rich people getting richer. That's communism. That's the entire religion. It is a few people who run the whole place while they wipe everything out. And, and again, these people are not hypocrites. I, I mean, they are, but they're not. It's not that they're hypocrites. It's that they feel as if they are a higher class. The people who run this country all share the same three characteristics now. No love of country. They're completely divorced from reality because they go right from universities into government. They live in D.C. They have no idea how real people live. And lastly, they genuinely believe they are these blue bloods and you are the plebs and they should rule over you. And it's not it's not that they're hypocrites. They're part of the priest class. They, of course, get the fancy communion wine. You, peasant, if you're lucky, will be allowed to sit in the pews. And for them, that's not hypocrisy. That's simply the natural order of things. Sydney, do you kind of admire it? I keep asking all my guests this, like, do you kind of admire their ability to be hypocrites, even though I get Jesse's points, but just to just say anything that is completely uh, in conflict with the way they actually live and just get away with it time and time again and do it completely shamelessly? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of impressive that they don't hold themselves to any standards. But, I, you know, it's funny because I know that, I think you three would disagree with me on this. When I looked into what he'd said, I guess I don't really find it that hypocritical in the sense that he's paying the $30,000 per kid. Whereas I, I think that what we're talking about here is that the government in some way will be subsidizing and funding poorer students to go to private schools. I went to a private school, I freely admit that. And my parents paid, I think, somewhere in the realm of 20 grand a year to send me there. But it was because they were in a financial position to do so. And that's why they're private schools. That's the differentiation between government schools and private schools. If they're being government funded, then aren't they now government funded private schools, like, I don't know, I, maybe I'm wrong here, maybe I don't understand the, the topic that well, but I feel like on this one, I kind of get where he's coming from.
a little yeah, bit. Well, I think, but, I think the, uh, go ahead, Elijah. No, I was gonna say, who funds the government? Like a lot of this is a little more complicated. It's and, why and, and, taxpayer and, funded Elijah. Well, but yeah, I, I know, like, but, but the taxpayer, what it's saying is that you're paying, paying into a full- He's paying out of to pay no, for yeah, kids to go Yes, to you point. are. It's like social security. So you're paying over time. Like assuming when you had kids and they grow up and they're going into these high schools, a lot of this isn't necessarily school choice, even for elementary schools. A lot of this is specifically in terms of charter schools and public, well, they're just still public, but public high schools and, and, and private high schools. This is where the main argument is coming down. There are some other arguments in, in primary school, but it comes into middle and, and secondary education. And the interesting thing, though, is that it's just like Social Security, which is, you know, you're paying into, but will probably dry up before you can actually tap into it. There is an understanding that the government has allotted a certain amount of spending to be made for your child because of the money that you pay into the tax system through property taxes, et cetera. And so what the point of this is, is that people are saying, well, if there's a certain granted amount of my money that I'm paying into the government that's being set aside to pay for my child's education, education overall long term believing that I'll pay into it can I not use that money to put my kid not just in a private school but in a school that I believe that they should be into this goes into districting putting them into a different district this goes into charter schools allowing schools to be partially uh, privately funded through grants and also through the federal government they're not just saying hey this is private they're even looking like can we get donors and use tax credits can you give me a, a not even money can you give me a tax deduction so I can use that money to to put into my kids private education because I don't want to pay the tax for them to go to a public school, giving people the choice with their own money, how they spend their taxes is really the argument when you get down to it and how that money is allocated, where it's saying, no, there's no other way. You need to give this certain amount of money and everyone needs to be equal and go to the same school. Yeah, I get That's that. That's where I, it's at. I, but now I understand that. And in the sense that that makes sense, what you just said makes total sense if people want to actually have a decision making or they want to actually participate in the decision making for where their money goes in relation to the education of their children. But if we're just talking about like, are you a hypocrite because you send your kid to a private school and you pay this amount of money out of your own pocket? You're paying that in addition to the taxes that you're already paying for the other students to go to, pri uh, to to public schools, rather. I just guess that I look at this and I go, I don't really understand. Like, look, he said some other jack stuff about education. Freely, fully admit that. When it comes to this one, I'm like, I don't really, I don't know. I don't really see. Well, I think I think the other lay of hypocrisy is that he doesn't want to instill the economic policies that would allow anyone else to have the 30 grand that he's paying per kid on, on top of everything else. But actually, we've got we've got a theme of sort of hypocrisy or something much worse than hypocrisy going here. Uh, this next video, this is Ben and Jerry. You know these hippie '60s ice cream people. They did an absolutely debacle. I mean, a true disaster of an interview with Axios. We've got about a minute of it right here. If you disagree with the Israeli government policy? Why not just stop sales completely? Well, I disagree with the U.S. policy we couldn't stop selling in the US. I think it's fine to be involved with a country, to be to be a citizen of a country and to protest some of the some of the country's actions. And that's essentially what we're doing in terms of Israel. We hugely support Israel's right to exist, mm -hmm. but we are against a particular policy. You guys are big proponents of voting rights. Why do you still sell ice cream in Georgia? Texas, abortion bans. Why are you still selling there? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's a it's an interesting question. I don't know what what that would accomplish. We're working on those issues of voting rights and Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, you know, I mean, I think you ask a really good question, and I think I'd have to sit down and think about it for a bit. He'd have to sit down and think about it for a bit. He's half Bernie Sanders, half Larry David. We should have put the curb music in there. Uh, but it's just such a perfect, such a perfect example about how these people don't think through anything. And by the way, uh, guys, you're not gonna believe this. Those hippies, those peace-loving, progressive, socialist hippies, they sold Ben and Jerry's uh, about 15, 20 years ago for roughly $350 million to Unilever, one of the largest corporations in the entire world. Uh, but again, is, is hypocrisy, calling it hypocrisy is not quite enough, is it, Jesse? 
No, it's not. But I, they're they're just par for the course. I mean, you brought up that they're huge Bernie people, and Bernie's a great example of this. How, what did he have? Three houses while espousing yep. all that communist crap he throws out there. But again, this is not. It's not hypocrites. That's what socialism is. That's what communism is. It always works out that way. It's always for the peasants, right? It's always for the ones they should rule over. It's never, it's never for them. They all want the finer things in life. They just believe they should rule and deny you the finer things in life because they are the gods that'll hand out the economy or hand out the equality that they believe the world should do. That's, that's, that's why the whole thing has been such a joke. It's why it's rejected all the time. It's why it fails all the time because nobody, nobody can take in that much power and not want more of it or that much money and not want more of it. It fails all the time for a reason and those guys are a great example. Sydney, this kind of reminded me of the Sanjay Gupta, Joe Rogan thing from this week that when basically these people who are treated with kid gloves all the time in media appearances, when they have to do something a little more long form, and I doubt that Axios is like the most difficult place, you know, that woman, she's perfectly fine, obviously, but like, I, I don't think this was like, they walked in thinking this was gonna be the hardest thing ever, that they completely fold because they really don't know what they're talking about, which is exactly what happened to Sanjay with Rogan. I know, and it's, you know, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I get the worst secondhand embarrassment watching this stuff because like that pause and he goes, I don't know. Oh my God, I thought my heart was gonna explode. It's so awkward to listen to. But I mean, you're right. At the end of the day, if you receive no pushback on anything that you ever say out in the world or ever put out into the world as a general rule, when you do come into contact with somebody who questions you, even in, and she was being very nice that interview, mm -hmm. by the way. She was being very, very polite and very nice. Uh, if, if, you're, if you still can't answer a question, then it really goes to show that, A, you haven't thought through your position, which I think when it comes to ice cream people, I'm not really surprised by that in any capacity because they do <laughs> slacktivism. It's that thing where, oh, let's put uh, Colin Kaepernick on a on an ice cream tub and that's going to be the end of it. Let's make our uh, you know millions in sales. We'll manipulate the crap out of the population. Then we take our money home and we sit up on, you know, in our nice little house away from all the plebs and we go, ha, 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 look, we did our good thing for the day. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not surprised by these people being as dumb as uh, two short planks because that's kind of what they do, but they are really good at manipulating us. I think that's what's funny about it. The people who Elijah, buy into this, I pity them. Elijah, the longer I do whatever it is that I do here, the more it's obvious to me that my old former team, pretty much everybody, and there's almost no exclusions to this, it's not necessarily that they're bad people, although there are some bad ones at the top, but pretty much everybody just does not think about anything. They just think the world exists because it should exist and it's the way they want it to be and they have to keep you know, replicating it to be the way they want it to be, but they just don't think about anything. So then you get asked like the most basic question and, and you completely freeze up. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this comes into worldview. I mean, when you think the world's been around for billions and billions of years, it always was and it always will be, then there's not much incentive to really think about things. It's just to keep things going. And if you think the world's just a machine and a mechanism with no purpose, then you don't need to have a purpose. You just need to react. And so that's where worldview largely comes into how society forms. And these people are just not awake. They, they don't they don't process information in any tangible way. And Dave, this makes me miss, I'll tell you this. So this was sort of a white pill for me because, you know, this makes me miss the college wars of like 2016, 2017. <laughs> Those are the good old days. Oh yeah. I mean, you were right in the thick of that. I mean, I remember going to protests. I was laughing right now. I was watching some old protest footage going out there, you know, asking people, you know, about Donald Trump and people telling me Donald Trump was Hitler's nephew and asking them, like, I thought they were joking and then being like, no, no, I, he is. And you're like, <laughs> okay, so apparently being mentally ill is no longer a disability. It's a uh, common trait of our current society. And so, I, you know, I mean, we remember that and the, these people were stupid and they've learned to shut up. They've, they've shut up and they've given their mouthpieces to the forefront. They become militant because we mocked them. We made fun of them. And the sad part is, is they didn't learn to become smarter. They are not trying to become smarter. Like Jesse said, cause they're not hypocrites because they're dumb. The people in power have just realized that it's not about using these dumb people at the forefront anymore. They've gone full military industrial complex communist by using now policy and using the government to do their battles for them. Like the days of the brown shirts and believing Ben and Jerry's to, is going to accomplish leftist goals is totally out the window. Nobody even relies on these people anymore because they really don't know what the hell they're talking about. And unfortunately, in some ways, they're kind of victims of their own ignorance.
Yeah. I, I, let me let me let me monologue on that for a brief moment here. Sorry, sorry. Let me take Go this for, for a second for because that, I get emails sometimes to my show from former communists, and they'll write in, and every single one of them, to a man or to a woman, will say. It is groupthink, it is a hive mind. And I, a long time ago, I did some stupid YouTube video, it doesn't matter, where I went to the Brett Kavanaugh protests. And I went undercover, even though I stick out like a sore thumb. None of that matters, it's on. It's still on YouTube. But there was a moment where one of these communists came up to me, because she had followed my social media and said, hey, this Jesse Kelly, uh, he, he's, he's not really one of us. And then she says, it's still in the video, she says, I always thought it was so odd, she says, do not talk to this clown. And then she starts a chant that nobody joins in, do not talk to this clown, do not talk to this clown. And I thought it was the oddest thing, like, what are you chanting? What is wrong with you? But I, I thought it was really, actually a really revealing moment. That's how these people are. It is a total hive mind. They don't think it is the hive mind. It's why, whether it's Barack Obama or Ben and Jerry or anybody, Sanjay Gupta or any of them, if you actually can pin them down and ask one or two probing questions just that deep, I mean, we're talking Air Force deep, just that deep, <laughs> nothing. They just cave. They either cave or they lash out. Fascist, racist, that kind of stuff. I want people to know when they do that, it's not because they think you're that. It's because that's their trained response from the hive mind when challenged because they don't yeah. have any depth at all. None of them do. You're, you're so right. I mean, most of my audience has seen this already, but there's a video that I did from University of New Hampshire like five years ago and they're chanting and they're screaming and they've got noisemakers and the whole thing. And every time they start chanting and they would do it, they would have a, a bell to signal when who was supposed to chant, what they were supposed to chant. And I would literally get in, I mean, you can see the video on YouTube. I would walk up to them, get a few feet away from them and I would try to look them in the eye and say, hey, if you've got a problem with anything I'm saying or you, you disagree with me, please let me know, but you're just mindlessly chanting. You're not really getting anything across. And they won't even look at you at that point because they don't, this is to Elijah's point, they don't even see you as a human at that point, which if you start not seeing people as human, uh, you might start doing some bad things to them. Uh, but speaking of bad things, let's, let's finish up with uh, what's going on in Australia. Uh, and uh, we've got some video here. There's a lot of craziness happening in Australia, and I've been talking about it all week, that in Italy and in France and across Europe, there's all these anti-vaccine protests, but for some reason, guys, it's not on CNN. They're not showing this on MSNBC that people can stand up against the government. Couple quotes here from the BBC. Uh, Sydney exited lockdown after New South Wales state reached a double dose vaccination target for over 16 year olds. More restrictions will ease when over 80% of over 16 year olds are fully vaccinated. Currently over 90% have received the first dose. And Australia has previously adhered to a COVID elimination strategy. And this remains the objective in some states. So there's a million videos basically of all over Australia where they are arresting people for walking their dogs, people just walking out to the market, the police officers choking people in the name of health. I mean, irony is truly dead. Uh, Sydney, I just mentioned Sydney, so uh, you are Australian. What the hell is going on over there? Uh, you know, people, I think people are shocked because they always have this perception of Australia that Aussies are these like very right wing sort of larrikin redneck kind of people. And I suppose to some extent they are, but there's also this reliance on the government over there that drove me crazy when I lived there, which is part of the reason why I left. Um, but I'm not really shocked by what I'm seeing because Aussies, and I, I've, I've said this a thousand times and I'll keep saying it, Aussies value security over freedom. And the problem is that when that is your primary mentality, it means that anything that the government says is good for you, you're inclined to believe. So it's really like, again, I mean, when you consider, I don't know if you guys heard, but in the Northern Territory, which is arguably one of the most like relaxed places, um, in the, the entirety of the country. It's Melbourne and Sydney that are really, really, really bad. But in Northern Territory, if you don't get vaccinated uh, in particular workplaces, they'll, the government will fine you $5,000. So we're at a point where they've just reached like apex stupidity and the people, it's sad, they can't do anything to fight back. They're totally disarmed. Jesse, you, yeah, Jesse, you talk a lot about the media. I mean, the fact that none of these protests, and we're seeing massive protests across Europe, the fact that none of them, and I'm not exaggerating, they're never covered on mainstream media in America, that, that's a signal to us, right? Like it's like, oh, don't you find out about that because then you might start doing it here. 
It tells you all you need to know. And I, and I still remember, David, I'm sure you do too. Right after the election, they actually ran a poll. It ties right into this. Uh, they pulled Democrats. What do you think the biggest issue in America is today? And by a mile, I think it was double the next closest thing, by a mile for Democrats in the United States of America, the most important issue was tackling white supremacy. Now, I've lived everywhere. I, I'm 40 years old. I've lived all over this country. I've never met one. White supremacy doesn't even exist in any organized form in this country. And if there's even a whiff that you are one, your whole life's destroyed and the FBI will probably knock on your door. So this is something that does not exist. And yet half the country, because of the media, thinks it's the number one priority of the nation. Now, translate that to how they're going to handle all these massive protests. You already heard the president of the United States, oh, Southwest Airlines said it, it wasn't a walkout, it was the weather, when it was sunshine and clear skies and no wind and things like that in Florida. They're now, because you can't cover up the pain that's coming, you can't cover up ground beef and gas and eggs and baby formula and all the other financial pain that's coming, now they're going to lie about the why. Just mark my word, the, the why is what they'll lie. Unforeseen circumstances. Oh, oh, it's foreseen, but they'll lie a lot now. Elijah, to that point, have they just created the perfect system here of lying? Well, they've done it sort of everywhere, that no matter what happens, you can always blame it on the unvaccinated. You can always blame it on the insurrectionists and the white supremacists and all of the people who have actually no power whatsoever. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. I mean, when you think about all of this, uh, it's a basically a perfect recipe because they control so much of information to essentially set whatever narrative they want to. And even if people don't agree with it, it doesn't matter because they're so demoralized, they won't even fight it. Uh, I, I don't even think people want to think right now. And, I, and I've been arguing with people. People are so in denial about what's happening in the world. I'm watching people that I wished were standing up to the injustices in the world. Like, you know, I'd say to anybody who uh, gets the vaccine that you didn't want to get it and it's against your moral conscience and you do something, anything, especially a medical decision out of peer pressure, you know, you will lose your ability to fight something even harder. If this is where you give up, if this is where you uh, are unable to resist, what makes you think you're going to be able to stand up to tyranny when things even get tougher? It's like, you, so you would sacrifice your life for somebody that would be discriminated against because you have some weird romantic uh, romanticization of, you know, World War II and that you would give your life for the Jews so the Nazis wouldn't take them. Bro, you wouldn't even give up a $17 an hour job that you hate to do something that you didn't want to do. And yet you would give up your life. Oh, please give me a break. I mean, it's like you put on a mask voluntarily and I'm not being patronizing or, or pretentious here. I'm just saying like, you know, the people that I see that are, you know, getting vaccines when they don't want to get them and they're feeling like they're being forced to get them, which is different than people who want to get them, right? There's a big difference there. Um, I see those are the same people who, even when they didn't have to wear a mask, were still wearing one because a sign asked them to. And it's the people that what it is is the people have slowly not stood up to the tyranny as it's occurred, as it's happened. And slowly they've made decisions that have broken their conscience, that have went against their, their uh, ability to resist. And the, the government knew that from shutdown, from two weeks to shutdowns, to extensions, to social distancing, to masks, to now mandates, people don't have the will in them to fight anymore on a mass scale. And so, yeah, they can do whatever they want. Now, of course, the the vocal minority, it isn't the it isn't the silent majority. It's actually the vocal minority. Remember, most wars and things were fought with like one to three percent of any given population. We're standing up and going, look, we drew the line a long time ago. And if you're listening to this and you've already given it enough, what is it going to take for you to draw the line to say, no, enough is enough. I'm not giving into this. I'm not fighting. Uh, oh, I'm not going with the curve. I'm going to join the fight. I'm going to resist. And if this isn't what it takes, then we're not on the same team. And I'm sorry, you will not be there for me. And I cannot rely on you. And it's breaking apart families. It's breaking apart states. It's breaking apart countries. And more importantly, it's dividing the world. But I got to say, choose which side you're on today, because if you don't, the choice is made for you. No, well said, the least we can all do is just stop participating in the lie because they are just gonna keep lying. All right, I got 30 seconds for each of you. Give, give me some version of a white pill if you believe there is a white pill in all of this or a, a silver lining. I think there were a couple moments this week that actually did seem kind of good. They're, they're overt lying. You know, everything that Saki says is now such so obviously a lie. That's got to be red pilling people. CNN accidentally had two doctors on saying that we shouldn't have vaccine mandates for flights. Like the, the Sanjay Gupta Rogan thing. Like there's a couple moments that seem like they're waking up people. That's kind of my white pill of the week. Kelly, any hope? 
Oh yeah, absolutely hope this Southwest Airlines thing is not small. This is the start of something big. This is the start of a massive nationwide protest. It is the start of the end of the Biden administration. It is a big, big, big deal. It's really important. We don't need a majority. We don't even need a, t- a, a big minority. 10% of this country chooses to push back and not participate. They will bring this regime to its knees and I think it's happening. Sydney. Um, I really like that there's a bunch of police forces around the country that are actually not participating anymore in the vax mandate stuff. And I'll say this much about back home in Australia. I'm noticing that more and more and more people are getting pissed off and they're actually willing to do something about what the government's doing. And that makes me really thankful and really happy. Yeah, even here in crazy LA, our police chief is not enforcing it. So, I mean, if there's ever, if there's ever a sign for hope. All right, Elijah, bring us home and then I'm gonna finish up for a few minutes without you guys. Yeah, I would just say that hard times are creating strong men. And I'm watching a lot of people email me every day that are giving up. A guy gave up his job at Border Patrol, even broke up with his fiance. He said, I've watched your show, shows like this. And I realized I needed to to become the man that I need to be. And the country needs strong men. It needs women who believe in those men and families together. And the fact that it's unfortunately hard times aren't fun, but there's a lot of men who are responding to the call. And it's giving me great hope because these are men that I know will be able to rely on when things become almost impossible. Well, I got nothing better to do than save the world. I suspect you guys don't either. So I thank you for joining me and our work is cut out for us. Thanks boss. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, so I have actually no idea what happened with our live stream capabilities there. So sorry for the delay. Hopefully we can work all that out. Connor, you're, you're working throughout the weekend, okay? You're gonna get in there, get in the computer and we're gonna miniaturize you and put you in the processor or something like that. Uh, Anyway, I really do think there's hope. I really do think there's hope. There's little glimmers. That's all we've needed. Remember last week when I was saying, ah, it's hard to see the thing. Well, now there's some glimmers. So so just do what you can do or just enjoy yourself for the weekend. How about that? Just forget the whole freaking thing and eat some good food and listen to some great music and do something that you enjoy. That is also pretty darn good. All right, have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll see you on Monday.